Hello, this is Leroy Meadows, and welcome to this session where we're going to be talking about capacity analysis and doing an example of this. Uh, so I want to thank you for joining me. This example is actually example uh, exercise 930 at the end of your chapter of Horngren's uh, Cost Accounting Book of 16th edition. So let's go ahead and get started here. Thunderbolt is a manufacturer of the very popular G36 motorcycles. The management at Thunderbolt has recently adopted absorption costing and is debating whether which denominator level concept to use. The G36 motorcycles sell for an average price of $8,200. Budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead costs for 2017 are estimated at $6,480,000. Thunderbolt uses subassembly operators that provide component parts. The following are the denominator, le denominator level options that management has been considering. Been considering theoretical capacity based on three shifts, completion of five motorcycles per shift and a 360 day year, capacity to manufacture is 5,400 motorcycles. Practical capacity, theoretical, pa theoretical capacity adjusted for unavoidable interruptions, breakdowns and so forth is 3,840. Normal capacity utilization is, remember we talked about that, that was a normal uh, demand over a couple years, two or three years, and that's estimated 3,240 units. Master budget capacity utilization uh, is 3,600 units, and that's what we budget for this year. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the budgeted fixed manufacturing overhead cost rates under the four denominator level concepts. So now let's go th uh, go through a few things and let's just define our terms. First of all, remember we talked about denominator level capacity. Capacity is the most we can produce or the upper limits of what we can produce. When we talk about denominator level, we're talking about the denominator when we're computing our predetermined overhead allocation. So the uh, amount of overhead we're going to uh, allocate on a per unit or a per allocation base rate unit, where there's um, um, machine hours, uh, labor hours, labor costs, whatever our allocation base is, that is our denominator level. So we have denominator levels of theoretical capacity. And how do we calculate theoretical capacity for the denominator level? We're going to take the full number of shifts, three shifts, times the number of motorcycles we can produce. And remember, under theoretical capacity, we're assuming no interruptions, full production all the time, no downtime whatsoever. So based on that, if we never shut down, then we can produce five motorcycles per shift, times three shifts per day, which is what then? 15 motorcycles per day times 360 days would give me 5,400 units. Remember that practical capacity reduces theoretical capacity to adjust for unavoidable interruptions, breakdowns, preventative maintenance, and so forth. So taking that into consideration, we can only produce four motorcycles per shift times three shifts per day. So under practical capacity, I can produce 12 motorcycles per day times the number of days that we plan on producing. And again, uh, this is going to be different than theoretical capacity. Why? We may have holidays uh, and so forth. So in this case, we're only going to produce for 320 days. So 12 units per day times 320 days of production would give me practical capacity of 3,840 units. Normal capacity we talked about, uh, that is uh, what we expect to do over a number of different years, over, uh, over a longer period of time, where master budget capacity is focused only on this year. And that's going to take into account, in this case, strengthening stock market, growing popularity of, the of motorcycles, um, and then so marketing de uh, department issued an estimate for 2017 that we're going to sell approximately 3,600 motorcycles. So now let's fix the manu uh, let's compute 
the fixed manufacturing overhead cost rate. So under all four levels, I'm going to take my fixed manufacturing costs, and that's what, $6,480,000. And I can actually just copy that down here. Now, what's my budgeted capacity level? Well, under theoretical capacity, I figured that if I never shut down, never do anything, just run, 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 run for 360 days a year, I can produce 5,400 5, motorcycles. So 5,400. So what's my cost rate then uh, on, a, uh, on a per unit basis? I simply take my fixed manufacturing costs, divide it by my capacity level at this level, and I will get $1,200 of overhead costs on a per unit basis. Now, what is, my, uh, under practical capacity, how many units can I produce? Well, I can produce 3,840 motorcycles. So 3,840. So if I do that, what are my costs per unit? Spread out my fixed manufacturing overhead costs per the period. Divide that by the number of units I'm going to produce per the period, and that's $1,687.50. And I can do the same thing with my normal capacity, 3,240 units, and that gives me a fixed manufacturing cost of $2,000 per unit. And then what's my master budget? My master budget unit, I what I expect to sell this year, $3,600 or 3,600 motorcycles. If I do that, then I expect my fixed manufacturing overhead cost per unit to be $1,800. Now the rates are different because of the different levels of capacity when I have my fixed manufacturing overhead cost per unit. Now remember that theoretical and practical capacity are supply side concepts such as production, how much can I produce, how much can I make, so this is going to be supply side. And let me go ahead here. And this is going to be demand side. And why is that? That is because of uh, the focus on normal capacity and master budget capacity are based on how much people want of our product. So it has nothing to do with how much we can produce, but rather how much customers want our product. So now what's the benefit? The, now the variances that are going to arise here, and we're we'll going to requirement two now, what are the benefits to Thunderbolt of using either theoretical capacity or practical capacity? Um, The benefits of using that is so we can distinguish between supply side and demand side uh, for capacity. Um, and this amount here, remember this amount here we talked about in the chapter, is going to directly relate to our production volume variance. So, um, so we don't want to take too much of a look at our production volume variance. I mean, as far as we do want to look, but we don't want to over rely on production volume variance um, as the only measure of economical cost of unused capacity. So remember production volume variance, if it's unfavorable, then we have not utilized capacity well enough. Whereas if it's favorable, we have utilized our capacity more efficiently than we had that than we had planned on. So let's take a look at part three. Under a cost-based pricing system, what are the negative aspects of a master budget denominator level and what are the positive aspects? Well under a cost-based pricing system, this could lead to higher prices when there's a lower level of sales or a lower level of demand. And what do we talk about in the chapter? That if there's a lower level of demand and our fixed manufacturing costs are higher on a per unit basis, 
if we don't adjust to that, we could inappropriately get ourselves uh, messed up in the uh, and caught up in the downward demand spiral where we're not changing our costs because we're assuming that our full manufacturing costs are this. That can lead to erroneous pricing decisions um, where our competitors may be lowering their prices. We're not. So what's going to happen to our business? It's going to continually shrink because we're not meeting our competitors' prices. So now the benefit of using normal uh, capacity and modular budget capacity. Well, normal uh, capacity tells us how much demand there is. So there's a good sense of that. I mean, it tells us how much demand there is. And why is that important? Because we may at some point be able to adjust our capacity level. If our capacity level is so much greater than our normal demand, maybe it's time to reduce capacity. Whereas if normal capacity over a oh, two or three year period is rising, then as managers, we might want to look at possibly increasing capacity if our, if our, if our, uh, our predicted demand is going to be great, is going to be greater or coming very close to what our practical capacity is. And master budget capacity is good because why? It tells us what is our demand for right now. So how can we adjust and how can, and, and it, and it's a good benchmark also to evaluate performance because we want to evaluate performance based on our capacity level now and our demand now. So how well are we meeting our demand? How well are we managing costs for our demand um, and, and the decision-making process? So, we, so master budget capacity is good for benchmarking purposes. So this is Leroy Meadows. I want to thank you for joining us when we're talking about capacity analysis here in this problem. Again, this was exercise 9-30 at the end of the chapter. Thank you. Have a good day.